Psalm 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 9, number 78. And here we were told about the number of sick days employees um, take in a year. Um, and, and we were asked to go ahead and look at this and say, hey, do we, do we actually believe that the average number is 10, right? They're saying it's about 10. Is it really 10? Let's go ahead and run a hypothesis test to see if, if we have any evidence that this belief is not true. We'll assume it's true, but let's see if it's not true. So as I go through this, things to take note of is I see the word mean, right? I also see some raw data. Like I actually see some numbers in here. These are not proportions, right? And then this actually defined your variable, the number of sick days they took in the past year and its employees. So as soon as I see that, I can see I have a numerical variable. And whenever I have a numerical variable, and technically the units on this variable are days, it's going to tell me I'm in mean land. And that's going to tell me I need to run a t-test. So I have the 13 steps laid out here. I have the assumptions I need for mean land. So let's, let's go and start this. So my first one is define a parameter. I'm in mean land, so I'm going to do mu. So this is going to be the true average number of sick days an employee takes in a given year. So true average uh, number of sick days an employee takes in a year. All right. And then... Steps two and three always go together, right? There are null and our alternate. We'll make sure we have a colon after each of them. Whatever parameter you define in step one, and in this case it was mu, it should show up in steps two and three. So let me go ahead and I'm going to have a mu here and a mu here. Now the claim is 10, all right? So on average, 10 days. And they're just saying, hey, does the personnel team believe this number is 10? So they're not slanting us one way or the other. They're not saying, should the personnel team believe it's greater than 10, less than 10, it just says, hey, it is 10. So the alternate is going to be a two-sided alternate. So we have 10 days in the null and then just different from 10 days in the alternate. All right, so I've done steps one, two, and three. Um, for my alpha, there wasn't one stated, so I'm going to default to 5% alpha. All right, for our assumptions... Let's go ahead and take a look at those. So as we go through our assumptions, oh, and I thought I had the assumptions here. I don't know where it might have, I embed images sometimes and then sometimes things don't um, pop up the way I want. Well, it was here. Oh, well, what are you going to do? I, I have them memorized, so I'm good. So the first thing to check was, hey, did I have a random sample? And as I go back through here, it does say we randomly chose eight employees. So I do have a random sample. And then the big one is normality. And in Meanland, there's three ways to get normality. You can um, have that the population distribution was stated to be normal, which it isn't. Um, if you look anywhere in this word problem, you don't see the word normal. You can say, hey, is your sample size 30 or higher so that the central limit theorem kicks in? Well, we only had eight folks. So no, that's, that's not the way I'm getting it. But they did give me raw data. And so I can make a graph and check, hey, is this, is this graph roughly symmetric where they're outliers. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take my eight data points and I already plugged them into my calculator. So if we, oops, let me get out of there. That was the last problem. If we go into my, um, into L1, you can see it. So I'm going to make a box plot. So I'm going to turn this plot on. Um, it looks like I had a residual plot. So let me change that. If I want a box plot, I want to modify it. I want to see if there are outliers. Um, my list is in L1 and it's got a frequency of one. All right, so let me go ahead and hit graph. Now on the app, there's a zoom in the bottom left corner and I can hit zoom stat. So there's my box plot. Let me scrunch it a bit just so I can see it. Oh, and I can see I, I must have been graphing something. I bet the last time I did a problem, this was off of linear regression. Hold on, let me clear this out. I bet it's in my y equals. Ooh, I was having some fun. I was doing like cubic regression. Well, I'll be. All right. So there's my box plot. It is looking roughly symmetric, right? There are only eight data points. And imagine for a, a box plot, you, you need five of those eight just to summarize it. So I've got my box plot roughly symmetric, no outliers. Let me go ahead and sketch that. All right. So I've got my box plot. Looks something like this. So box plot, roughly symmetric. with no 
outliers. So what we say at that point is, well, if our box plot, if our sample is coming, it, it, excuse me, if our sample's graph is roughly symmetric with no outliers, it's plausible that it came from a population distribution that was roughly symmetric with no outliers, potentially on the bell curve. So we're willing to roll the die on that. And then here, my sample standard deviation, I need S. Now, what that would mean is I would need to get the sample standard deviation from these eight numbers. And you can run one of our stats, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this like I, I would if I was really writing it up. So at this point, I need technology. So I'm actually going to kind of jump to the end here. You're going to see me do steps basically 10, 11, and 12, and then just the tail end of number five. I'm going to go ahead and run all of this on my calculator and then use that, that calculator output to inform my write-up. So here's what I mean. I'm going to head back to my calculator. Now remember, I had my data in L1, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to go to test. I want to do t-test. Now this was an old problem, so I need to fill some of this in. So for now, down here, you can. I'm going to toggle. You can see the data stats options. I need to do data. And my data was in L1. I'm going to keep it there. All right. Now my my mean for or my null mean was 10. So let me enter that in. And then it actually just defaults and figures everything out. But I, I do need to change my alternate. I need to make sure the alternate options down here match. And we had a not equals to. So where I'm going with all of this is I'm, I'm going to use the T value and the P value in a bit. But you can see the standard deviation was 4.10. So I'm going to write that out. So I'm going to take that 4.104 number and write it up in my assumptions. So let me head back over. So my sample standard deviation would have been 4.104, and then the units on this would have been days. So I'm through that. All right, let's do step six. If I'm in mean land, I'm going to do the T distribution. All right, if I want to title this, this would be a one sample mean T test. My degrees of freedom is always sample size minus one. So if I had eight folks, then I'm going to have seven degrees of freedom. So I don't need a period after that. Um, so for step nine is our test statistic. So it's always X bar minus mu. And since we're on the sampling distribution, we put it in ratio to the standard error of S over square root N. Step 10 is to fill this in with our particular numbers. All right, so I'm going to go back to my calculator and find out what X bar was. It looks like X bar was 8.375, all right? So I have 8.375 minus my sample mean of 10. My sample standard deviation we knew was 4.104, and my sample size was eight. And when I crunch that number, again, I'm gonna go back to my calculator. Let's see what it said. It said that test statistic was negative 1.12, okay? So I'm gonna do negative 1.12. All right, if I want my p-value, so I'm going to do this using TCDF, and then I'm, again, I'm just going to cut to that calculator output. So I would have a probability statement. Now, because I have a two-sided alternate, all right, I'm going to look at my test statistic of negative 1.12, and I'm going to do the left tail. So I'm going to do the probability that t is less than negative 1.12. Now, keep in mind, I need to double it because it's a, and I'm gonna highlight this again, because it's a two-sided alternate, because I need two tails. And I'll connect that in step 12 in just a bit. So this would be two times TCDF, and this would be low, high, and then our degrees of freedom, okay? And I'm gonna cut back to my calculator. It looks like our p-value is about 30%, 0.2996, so I'm just gonna round that to 30%. Oops, wrong thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let me go here. So this is going to be 30% or 0 0.30. If I wanted to draw a sketch, and you could see that sketch on my calculator output, but if I want to just draw this, right, zeros under the peak, our test statistic was negative 1.12. And because it's a two-sided alternate, I need the mirror image. I need the right tail as well. And then I need to shade all of that area. All right. And when I shade it, it should be about 30% of the curve, or basically about 15% on a tail. And, and that matches up. So if I want to go back to my calculator, again, you can see that that graph is up there, at least on the app, 
On the physical calculator, you'd have to run the t-test again and just choose graph as your option rather than calculate. All right, last thing we need to do is that conclusion. So let's go ahead and do it. Now my p-value is pretty large. It's much greater than my alpha, and my alpha was up here at 5%. So let's go ahead and summarize this. We will say because our p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject H0. All right, and then if we're going to fail to reject H0, we don't have sufficient evidence for the alternate. And when I say alternate, again, I don't have sufficient evidence that mu is different from 10. So I don't have sufficient evidence that the true average number of sick days an employee takes in a year is different from 10 days, which, okay, great. So let me write that up. We do not have sufficient evidence that the true average, and let me just repeat my words, true average number of sick days an employee takes in a year, true average number of sick days an employee takes in a year is different from 10 days. Now, that takes a lot to write up, all right? You also could have written it differently. You could say we do not have sufficient evidence that the personnel team, um, that the personnel team believes the mean number of sick days is different from 10. So you could have written that as well. That's another option. And before I head out of here, I just want to reiterate, I, I don't know that I circled back to it like I thought I was going to. I want to reiterate the reason that I doubled this, this calculation, and let me again use my, I'll go pink here. This particular quantity, the probability that t is less than negative 1.12 corresponds to that tail. But because we had a two-sided alternate, right? If I scroll back up, we had a not equals two test. So I want both tails. And since the area under this part of the curve is the same as the area under this part of the curve, that's why we just calculate one tail and then we double it for symmetry. So if you wanted to, you could have calculated the area under both curves separate or both tails separately and then added them. But quite literally, you would have gotten 15% here and 15% here. So why not just calculate this one and then multiply it by two to get to your 30%. All right, hope that